Hello everyone. I am here with a new science video. The subject of my video today will be stars. Today I want to tell you about the protostars. What are protostars and how are they formed? What is the relationship between them and the stars? I will answer each of these questions one by one. As always, a fun and informative video awaits you. Get ready, here we go. Although space may seem empty, it is actually full of thinly spread gas and dust. This gas and dust is called interstellar medium. The gas is mostly made up of atoms of hydrogen, though small amounts of heavier elements can be found floating through space, as well. In some places, the interstellar medium is collected into a big cloud of dust and gas called a nebula. A nebula can be many light years across. It is in these nebulae that dust and gas can come together to form stars. A star is not truly a star until it can fuse hydrogen into helium. Before that, they are called protostars. A protostar looks like a star but its core is not yet hot enough for fusion to take place. The luminosity comes exclusively from the heating of the protostar as it contracts. Protostars are usually surrounded by dust, which blocks the light that they emit, so they are difficult to observe in the visible spectrum. A protostar is formed as gravity begins to pull the gases together into a ball. This process is known as accretion. As gravity pulls the gases closer to the center of the ball, gravitational energy begins to heat them, causing the gases to emit radiation. At first, the radiation simply escapes into space. However, as the protostar pulls in matter and gets more dense, much of the radiation becomes trapped inside, heating the protostar even more quickly. Sometimes the formation of stars can be encouraged or sped up by disturbances in the gas clouds that compress the gas such as other nearby stars or supernovae. As the cloud collapses, it begins to spin and by the time a protostar is formed, the cloud flattens and there is a protostellar disk spinning around the protostar. These disks probably slow the rotation of the protostar, and sometimes coalesce into planetary systems. As the protostar rotates, it generates a strong magnetic field. The magnetic field also generates a strong protostellar wind, which is an outward flow of particles into space. Many protostars also send out high-speed streams or jets of gas into space. Usually there are two jets flowing out along the rotation axis of the protostar. Eventually the wind and the jets clear away the extra gas around the protostar and allow the protostar to come into view. A protostar becomes a main sequence star when its core temperature exceeds 10 million Kelvin. This is the temperature needed for hydrogen fusion to operate efficiently. If the protostar can reach a temperature of 10 million degrees Kelvin, the hydrogen fusion process will start and it will become an actual star. These stars which have successfully managed to start hydrogen fusion appear on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram in an area known as the main sequence, which is where stars spend most of their life cycle. The length of time all of this takes depends on the mass of the star. The more massive the star, the faster everything happens. Collapse into a star like our Sun takes about 50 million years. The collapse of a very high-mass protostar might take only a million years. Smaller stars can take more than a hundred million years to form. In a newly formed star cluster, there are many more stars with low masses than stars with high masses. For every star with a mass between 10 and 100 solar masses, there are typically 10 stars with masses between 2 and 10 solar masses, 50 stars with masses between 0.5 and 2 solar masses, and a few hundred stars with less than 0.5 solar masses. As time passes the balance shifts even more towards smaller stars because the higher mass ones die first. Stars above about 200 solar masses generate power so furiously that gravity cannot contain their internal pressure. These stars blow themselves apart and do not exist for long if at all. A protostar with less than 0.08 solar masses never reaches the 10 million Kelvin temperature needed for efficient hydrogen fusion. These result in failed stars called brown dwarfs which radiate mainly in the infrared and look deep red in color. 
They are very dim and difficult to detect, but there might be many of them, and in fact they might outnumber other stars in the universe. Brown dwarfs are generally smaller than our Sun, but larger than the planet Jupiter. Even though they aren't considered real stars, they continue to shine dimly for millions of years as they cool down. Deuterium burning Even though protostars can't fuse normal hydrogen atoms, they can fuse deuterium. Deuterium is a rare form of hydrogen that has both a proton and a neutron in its nucleus. Deuterium is much easier to fuse than normal hydrogen, so both protostars and some brown dwarfs are able to fuse it into helium. Deuterium burning is important in protostars because the reaction keeps the temperature inside at a constant 1 million degrees, like a stellar thermostat. Since normal hydrogen fusion doesn't occur until 10 million degrees, it will remain a protostar longer, accreting more matter and becoming a more massive star. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next science video. Don't forget to like the video and write your thoughts in the comments section. I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel.